G'day and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I wanna to talk to you about what the best sleeping position might be, and more importantly, how to find the best sleeping position for you, given any aches, pains, or injuries that you might be dealing with. And as a spoiler right off the top, there isn't a best sleeping position. And while that may sound anticlimactic based on the topic of this video, it's really important that I can explain to you exactly how we've come to that conclusion to give yourself the best chance of understanding what position is best for you, given those aches, pains, or injuries that you might have. So let's delve into a very interesting topic of conversation, and as always, hopefully give you a healthy dose of perspective to help you better understand what it is that you're actually dealing with and how best to approach that and get it to go away long-term. So when trying to answer the question of what is the best sleeping position, it may sound strange to say that there isn't a good or bad sleeping position. But the reason why we try and understand what the best sleeping position is for us is to essentially attempt to ward off any aches, pains, or dysfunctions that we seemingly accrue from certain sleeping positions. I think it's fair to say that lying down sleeping on your stomach is constantly demonized because of its ability to irritate and annoy neck tissue. And while we need to obviously respect that that is very common and a very real experience for so many people, there's actually more to this conversation than we realize that helps us better understand what's actually going on in those moments. And it's this perspective that I wanna talk about first, because without trying to understand the broader context of what's going on, we'll never be able to understand what the best sleeping position might be for you and your specific symptoms. So winding things back a little bit, as a physiotherapist, it's very common for people to come in to see me having woken up with a sore neck or a sore back or feeling like their arm goes dead at night that then takes us on this journey to try and find a better pillow, a better mattress, and ultimately what the best sleeping position is for us at any given time. But the first misconception that I want to try and bust is this feeling of sleeping funny that the pains and the sorenesses and the stiffnesses that you may feel upon waking in the morning are because of the positions that you were in while you were asleep. And again, it makes perfect sense. You didn't have any of these symptoms before your head hit the pillow, but then you wake up in the morning and suddenly your back or your neck feels stiff or sore. It's very logical and intuitive to assume that the only thing that's happened is something that you were doing when you were asleep that a certain shape or a certain position or a posture that you were in was something that your body didn't agree with. And so you deal with the consequences of that when you wake in the morning. But what's actually going on here is that any aches, pains, or dysfunctions that you feel of a nighttime, including a dead arm, and definitely that you feel in the morning upon waking, isn't actually because you've slept funny. Typically, it's actually a consequence of something that you were doing with that part of your body from the day before. For example, if we take exercise and, and going to the gym, if we took you to the gym and we both did a thousand sit-ups together, we would ultimately feel tired. And when we go to bed, it's not until our body rests and recovers from that activity, do we then open ourselves up to the possibility of waking up with sore abdominals. And if you were to wake up the next day and you couldn't get out of bed because your abs were screaming at you, again, intuitively, it makes perfect sense because when we take a step back, we realize that we did something unusual or overly challenging in the form of a thousand sit-ups. So we wake up with soreness, we recognize that we did something unique like a thousand sit-ups, and that makes perfect logical sense. And it's this very same concept that applies to sleeping funny or waking up with morning stiffness or soreness. The only difference is that the thing that caused that isn't as obvious and unique as a thousand sit-ups. And this is probably the most important perspective to understand if you truly wanna to get to the bottom of why certain sleeping postures and positions don't agree with you and why others do. Because what we do need to look out for are the basic postures and shapes that you put that part of your body into the most throughout the day. So if you're someone who wakes up in the morning and you have a consistently stiff neck and you're thinking, well, maybe it's time now I get a new pillow, or maybe I need to invest in a new mattress or try and force myself to be in a certain position throughout the night. Clinically for me, I would expect that throughout the day leading up to that, there was a shape or a posture or a position that you got into through that exact part of your neck, whether it was using a phone, doing a puzzle, reading a book, working on a computer, using an iPad, you know, sitting down, relaxing, watching TV. Some 
something sustained and sedentary most likely that isolated that specific part of your body. You take that to bed, your body registers that overload. And as it does when you sleep, it rests, it recovers, and it adapts to the stimulus that you presented to it over the course of those preceding 16, 17, 18 hours. And then like you do with any exercise, you wake up with the benefits or the consequences of that stimulus. So if you feel like you sleep funny or that your pillow or your mattress isn't good enough for you, we still wanna keep those things in mind because they can play somewhat of a meaningful role, but we've gotta stop thinking about them as the main cause of this dysfunction. It doesn't change how you feel or how valid your feelings are. It just means that we may need to take a smaller step back to include more than just your sleeping hours and consider your life as a whole over a cycle of 24 hours to truly understand what things might be just chipping away at the health and function of your tissue which your body is recovering from and adapting to and giving you those next day consequences and so this brings us to another important piece of perspective to try and understand why you may have certain aches or pains based on certain sleeping positions as a physio I would argue that there is no such thing as a bad sleeping position but there are certain shapes and positions that you can put your body into that can be very good at exposing that hidden dysfunction that you may have been accruing before your head even hit the pillow. And obviously sleeping on your stomach is a very good position at exposing hidden neck dysfunction. The main reason is obviously, is that when you are lying on your stomach, In order to breathe, you have to have your head jammed up into the end of your natural neck rotation range. But what's really interesting about this is that in that position, all that position is, is just an expression of shoulder range of motion and cervical rotation, neck rotation. And much like babies and infants who naturally sleep on their stomach, who haven't lost that indigenous function in their neck to tolerate that shape, if you do have some neck stiffness or some neck dysfunction, maybe you've got a, a disc that's a little bit grumpy from looking down a lot, or a couple of joints that are getting a little bit overloaded and irritated because of the shapes that you're unknowingly putting it in during the day. If you then take that to bed and force it into an end range position, it doesn't guarantee that you'll have a problem. But if you do have a problem, hindsight can be relatively clear. And what I find clinically is that people who don't enjoy sleeping on their stomach because it annoys their neck, as soon as you restore as much normal function to that neck as possible by freeing up the joints, loosening up the muscles, maybe improving the strength, but more importantly, the postures and the shapes that they're in before their body even hits the pillow, you can see a tangible change in how much they can tolerate lying on their stomach and jamming their head into one position. They stop waking up feeling sore from that shape much like there shouldn't be a sleeping position that causes you grief. But realistically, that conversation is pretty far away for a lot of people. It's unrealistic for a lot of people to feel comfortable in all positions currently because of a lot of the hidden joint and tissue dysfunction that we tend to have just from the modern world that we live in. But going right back to the start of the video when I said there isn't necessarily a best sleeping position, hopefully you can appreciate that how you feel in any given morning, regardless of the shape of the position that you're in, is just giving you some information that you can learn about what you've done with your body the day before. And if you can figure out which shapes and positions and postures that you naturally get into without realizing it, are setting you up to fail when you then go to sleep, then all of a sudden you'll have a much better understanding of what you can change to affect how you feel at the nighttime and how you wake up the next day. Because ultimately, your sleeping positions will either buffer some dysfunction from that day or expose dysfunction from that day. Understanding what is the best sleeping position for you today, based on how you feel today and how your dysfunction is going today, does require that extra information to then figure out logically and intuitively where you want to try and angle yourself at nighttime. But obviously the next thing we want to transition to is what is the best position for you based on your specific symptoms and how your body feels. So in breaking down what different sleeping positions might be beneficial for you and your symptoms currently, obviously we want to make sure that we realize that all of them should feel comfortable for you at some stage in a perfect world, because there is no sleeping position that is bad for you if your tissue is functioning well enough to tolerate it. 
Now, for the purposes of this video, there are three main sleeping positions that I think most people will intuitively gravitate towards. The first is obviously sleeping on your back with your legs bent or your legs out straight, whatever feels comfortable to you. The second is obviously sleeping on your side. And the third is obviously lying down on your stomach with your arm up with your head jammed off to the side. But in order to understand which one of these shapes is ultimately the best at buffering any of the hidden dysfunction that you might be dealing with, we can look at each one of those positions up against the common dysfunctions that people experience. Anything neck related and anything back related. So if you are someone who is dealing with any neck dysfunction day to day or when you wake up in the morning you feel like you've slept funny and your neck is the part of your body that isn't happy, clearly lying down on your stomach with your head jammed off to one side is a position that you may want to in the short term try and steer away from while you're working on improving your daily postures the mobility of those joints, the quality of those tissues, until you feel that you've regained enough function in your neck to then tolerate that shape again. If that is in fact a shape that you do want to get back to feeling comfortable with. And when dealing with neck pain, we're obviously at the mercy of your pillow in a lot of ways. Because ideally, in a perfect world, if you're someone who likes to sleep on your back, then based on good posture, you should absolutely not be using a pillow because this allows us to maintain a really up tall neutral spinal shape. But again, this doesn't necessarily take into account those people that may snore. Perhaps you've got some issues with your airways where sleeping on your back isn't necessarily good for you either. So traditionally, if you do have some neck dysfunction, then we would always recommend the starting point for you is to lie down on your side. Now, the important piece of the puzzle here with your pillow is that the best pillow for you is just one that fills the gap between your head and your shoulder as it connects to the surface that you're on. Now, obviously in a mattress, I would sink in a little bit more here. The floor's a little bit harder, so it does mean that when I'm in a good posture, I do have to drop my head down a little bit to make up the difference. But the thickness of your pillow should hold your spine in a neutral position, so it better helps you buffer the consequences of what you've been doing with that neck throughout the day. So in a perfect world, lying down on your side is ideally the best position for you if you are having some neck dysfunction. It's closely followed by lying on your back without a pillow. With the only caveat is that depending on the shapes and postures that you get into the most throughout the day, if you've got a really stiff upper back or you're stuck in a bit of a rounded shape, it may actually be beneficial for you to have a pillow to help cradle you in that same position that you might be forced into or are normally getting into the most throughout the day at work or at home. But if you have really good thoracic mobility and you feel comfortable being in a tall posture, then again, sleeping on your back without a pillow may be an advantageous way to help you buffer some of those neck symptoms. And obviously lying down on your stomach with your neck jammed off to one side is gonna be potentially the most aggravating and the least comfortable for you in the short term. But again, if you can improve the function of your neck, if you can improve the position positions and the shapes that you put that neck into either side of when you're asleep, then in a perfect world, it is reasonable for you to expect to feel comfortable being in that position again if you want to. And so following on from the neck, when we're talking about lower back dysfunction, depending on what type of lower back dysfunction you have may help give us clues as to which position might be more comfortable for you. If we're dealing with a disc issue or a joint issue, lying on your back or lying on your front can be both good or bad for those dysfunctions. For example, if you are someone who is dealing with some joint dysfunction, maybe you've got a stenosis or you've got a nerve root irritation, lying on your back with your knees bent up essentially is an example of subtle lower back flexion where we're opening up your lower back. When your legs are out straight, it does put us into more of like an extended lower back position. And if you have a sensitive joint or sensitive tissue, having your legs out straight might create a slight hollow in your back that exposes that tissue dysfunction. So it's well worth trying to figure out whether it is having your legs straight or having your legs bent as to whether these are more comfortable for you. Similarly, when you are on your stomach, if you're someone who is sensitive to an extension based position, this is essentially an extended position. This is a relatively extended position where the joint 
joints and the tissues in your back are arching backwards relative to lying flat on your back. So provided that your neck is at a level that can tolerate this, then this may be a comfortable position for your back. Obviously with your legs out straight, I just don't want to kick the pot plants. Um, another variation of this, if this is you, to take away some of that extension sensitivity is by gently bending a knee up. It just creates a little bit more of a, a flexion biased position in your lower back, relieving some of the tension through those areas. But again, as we mentioned, if your back joints are stiff, if your hip tissue is tight, if your postures throughout the day leading up to that aren't good enough, maybe you're getting a little bit slouchy when you sitting reclining back into your chair maybe you're standing bending over through a specific part of your back for five six seven eight hours during the day then you are more likely to expose that when you are asleep especially in a position that biases those sensitive tissues that you've taken to bed. The best version of this to sort of split the middle is potentially sleeping on your side. Whatever version feels comfortable for you, because in this position, we can have your legs out straight or we can curl your legs up depending on the position that you need your back into. Again, when you bend your knees towards your chest, it creates a relative flexed position in your spine. When your legs are out straight, it's relative extension. We obviously wanna make sure that if you are lying on your side that you again have a pillow that is thick enough to support your spine in a more neutral position to again help you better buffer the shapes and positions it might be getting into the most throughout the day and any overloaded tissue that you may have taken to bed. So obviously the, the answer to the question of what is the best sleeping position needs to be very specific and tailored to you and your symptoms. And hopefully you can appreciate that in a perfect world, there is no universal best sleeping position or for that matter, bad sleeping positions. They are literally just a position or a shape that you should put your body into to give you the ability to rest, relax, and recover. Naturally, if you do have a sore neck or some back dysfunction or some shoulder dysfunction or hip dysfunction, there will be certain shapes that may help you better buffer that dysfunction more than others. But we need to get out of this thinking that much like movement and activity, that there is a bad version of that. It can certainly feel that way, but that's because certain positions or movements are really good at exposing dysfunction that you may not realize it's there, but that you took into that experience. And I really want to make a big point that if you cannot take that step back and consider what positions and shapes that you're getting into the most throughout your day, become more aware of those and more importantly, try and improve your application of those shapes, then it may be genuinely unrealistic for you to expect to wake up feeling better the next day. And you can go through tons of different pillows and tons of different mattresses and all the different sleeping positions in the world. And you may never ultimately solve that dysfunction until you take that step back and consider your whole life, not just the narrow focus of what you might be doing when you're asleep. So as always, I genuinely hope that that was helpful. Please let me know in the comments down below which sleeping position do you feel is the most comfortable for you in your symptoms currently and whether what we've discussed in this video has just opened your mind to some different ways of thinking. Please like the video if you did find it helpful. Subscribe to the channel if you want to hear more from me about these types of things. But as always, I genuinely hope that helps you feel more rested and improves the quality of your sleep moving forward. And I'll see you next time.